What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. If you guys have enjoyed this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. Now, today's episode is probably going to be a little bittersweet for some of you, I'm sure. And to be honest, the previous episode was supposed to be the finale for this series. But I wasn't really happy with how our restaurant was coming together. So today... We're going to be fixing our mistakes, and by our, I mean my own mistakes on this building. And then after that, we'll go through the entire zoo and just go on a nice tour of all the different facilities. We haven't had an escaped animal in quite some time. How did you even get over there? Let's just go ahead and emergency capture old Darren. How did Darren get out of this fence, dude? I don't understand. Unless he can hop over this but i know it's i know it's like the the right height requirement and everything 10 years old and he managed to escape from his little habitat here unbelievable typical darren move so in that previous episode i would say a good majority of our time was spent just constructing this one portion of the restaurant and what you're seeing here is actually a completely different building it's been maybe not redesigned but reconstructed out here since the original now you'll notice some big differences maybe with the roof line but more importantly the shape of the building itself i really wanted it to be the shape of an octagon and no matter what i did i just couldn't get it to actually work so this is our first attempt we ended up making this smaller little insert that just sort of filled the gap but again it wasn't exactly what i was looking for so what we did instead, first of all, we did reshape the roof a little bit. It's essentially the same as it was, though now we have these little filler bits, I guess, in the corners. So the roof does still follow the same um, angle, I guess, as the, as the walls below it. And it just looks a little bit more normal. The only problem with it now is, obviously, we have some glass blocking the only entrances into this place. So we're going to have to adjust that in one way or another but as far as this building goes our main problem over here was that we have a negative a significant negative impact on our guests just from the staff resting facility so what i want to do with this is uh basically just remove that facility because we have a much larger staff resting facility out here and we'll replace that with a bathroom or something more useful for the guests Let's go ahead and knock this out first. I feel like that's going to be one of the easier things that we do today. So now that we've got that deleted, we will have to do a little bit of editing to the exterior, but it's nothing too crazy. It's just that the bathroom doesn't exactly have a window in it like the staff resting facility did. So now that we've got all of that removed, we can add in our toilet block. The only question is, do we want to set it in real deep there or do we just want to have it out front? Maybe let's just place it down right there. Now what we need is some sort of a surround that'll make this look quite a bit nicer. So we're going to match the same Australia wood wall that we had before. Though we just need a wider doorway. Something like this, I think, should fit in that gap pretty nicely. There we be. Easy, dude. Easy, easy. Now for the bathroom. I just don't love the dark blue and then light blue. And I don't love the color combination. Let's just put it that way. So we're going to come through and change this up a little bit. Maybe do some white flooring in there, some white tile on the walls for the backsplash. I'm actually going to change that to black. And then for the wall color, let's maybe also do that in black. I think that looks kind of cool. I can't remember what we did for the other toilet blocks. We only have two other ones in these little Bora Bora vendor places. Oh, we did actually a similar thing. Except it looks like we have a black floor in there. I wouldn't say that I really prefer one over the other. I mean, it's just a bathroom at the end of the day. But this will at least solve the issue of the negative impact on our guests. So all the, the vendors, I think actually there's only one true vendor that works in here. Even though three are visible, um, all those vendors, or I guess the one, will just rest over here now. Pretty close. Shouldn't be a huge deal for them. The next problem that needs solving is, as mentioned before, the glass here. The guests are kind of walking straight through these walls, though they are at least going through the opening, like what would be the opening, so they've got that portion of it figured out. But what we need to do is basically just move some of the glass around. That way they can properly walk through these walls instead of 
doing some Harry Potter stuff. I don't even know what's going on. Many, many minutes later. I kind of forgot how odd the dimensions were for this whole glass wall. Like the framework, the gap from say this pole to this pole isn't the perfect width for a glass pane. You know, all the glass panes have a, a predetermined size and you just have to put them wherever you can for it to look halfway decent. This I don't think is bad, but I just don't love the like gaps where the glass panes actually meet up. I wish those weren't as visible, but as you can tell, obviously we have a, a new opening here. We also have a new opening on the backside, but that alone isn't going to make the guests walk through those openings over doing their Harry Potter thing that they're still doing. So what we need to do now is go through and do a similar thing to what we ended up doing um, up in the front of the zoo, that being with those like barriers, I guess. We just sort of bury them, bury the barrier, who would have thunk it, um, into the ground and then the guests walk around the areas. So that's what we're gonna try to do for out here as well. All right, it's time to see if these openings are actually gonna function the way we want them to. So far, I mean, that looks pretty good. Group of guests has, has walked in and they're sprinting around now but ultimately going to the exit. We also have a couple of other people walking around the facility now. This whole path wasn't being used whatsoever before, so happy to see all this actually working out, dude. That's nice. The last change I wanna to make to this restaurant area is some interior support beams. I know we talked about doing it in the previous episode and I was just kind of fed up by that point, so I decided to save it for today. Um, and then after we do that, we can get going on the tour. If this is Darren again, dude. Oh, it's not. How are they escaping? How are you getting out? I don't understand. I really don't get it. Like, are they walking out when a keeper is walking in the gate? That's the only thing I can think of. Because the fence is still intact. Oh, you know what? I wonder if the terrain is just a little bit too high here. Like, just enough to where they can jump over that. I kind of wish we would have been able to, like, catch one of the animals escaping to see how they're actually getting out. But, anyways, I did manage to finish up these, um, I don't, they're just additional beams. They're decorative beams. They don't do anything, you know, structurally, but it's quite a bit nicer to look at now. I feel like it's maybe more visually appealing, which is all we were really after. Now that we've got the restaurant complete, looking nice. I think we're finally ready to start the grand tour of the Zuji Wetlands Zoo. This is really gonna be for the people who maybe don't have Planet Zoo installed. Everyone else, you're more than welcome to download the entire zoo from the Steam Workshop. Link to that will of course be in the description. I wanna enter into the zoo as all the other guests would. No special treatment here. So we're just gonna pretend that we just got off this here bus. We're gonna start making our way around the zoo. So, dude, I haven't actually been out to the parking lot Who's whistling? Who's singing? Is that coming from the bus? That was weird. I don't think I've actually been out to the parking lot since we finished it in episode one. I mean, we've done a few things out here, you know, tweak some of the foliage, but for the most part, I uh, I really haven't paid much attention to it. And there it is, the Zuji Wetland sign. Dude, we've got the members um, area over here. We've also got just regular old ticket sales. This area of the zoo is kind of interesting because Usually you wouldn't have the information kiosk on the outskirts of the zoo. This was so we could pretend that maybe you're buying your tickets here, but in all uh, in all actuality, you just purchase your tickets at this little gate when you walk through. So once again, we're just gonna pretend that we made our first purchase. And now that we're inside, I don't know if I wanna start on the right side of the zoo or maybe the left. Let's go left and then we can loop around, maybe take the train to the outskirts of the zoo. That could be fun. Let's try to just swim through the sea of people here. We'll take the high ground. First animal we're gonna be checking out here is the capybara. Not the most, you know, exquisite environment for them. It's a little boring, tell you the truth, but they seem to really enjoy themselves in here. And uh, they are just breeding like you wouldn't believe. There are a ton of these dudes and dudettes in here. I don't think we can actually learn much of anything from the Habitat Education Boards because it's in like sim speak 
You know what I mean? Like, none of the words are, are real words, or at least I don't think so. Suddenly, everyone and their mom is swarming the capybara exhibit. There must be a talk or something happening, dude. I have never seen this many people out here at one time. Oh, look. All these people with the with the headsets on, they bought, like, the, the audio tour guide or whatever from the information kiosk. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, there must be a talk or something. I, I'm not really sure. Again, I can't say I've ever seen that many people up there. Rounding the corner, though, it's going to spit us out right at the front of the capybara exhibit. You can see the capybara in their quote-unquote natural habitat. There's not really anything natural about this, apart from maybe the mulch that they're standing on. Just behind us here is going to be the first vendor area. We've been calling these the Bora Bora vendor areas because they're like stilted, sort of like the houses in, in Bora Bora. We've got a Chief Beef. Pip shot water, ATM in the little center bit right there. And then on the back side, a bathroom block and a gulpy soda, I believe, right? I can't remember. It sounds right. Anyways, back down the little boardwalk. We're going to continue around to the right side. I thought it'd be cool to add in, you know, some interactive stuff for the kiddos to do. Granted, there's still a lot to do as a kid in a zoo. You know, you're going around looking at animals. It's, it's a lot of fun. But something about the interactive things, like the giraffe, you can compare your height to a giraffe. Over here, I think this is a soundboard of some sort. This one, you can compare your, your paw print to the animal's paw print. And then again, you can compare your height to a gorilla. On the left here, this is going to be the Crocomagator exhibit. Uh, aren't they the caimans? It's funny, I know this is our zoo, but I can't actually remember. Spectacled Cayman, that's what it is. And uh, the mom in there would have just had Bebe, so wouldn't be surprised if we see a bunch more Bebe in here. Old Yolanda, dude, she gets down. She is freaky, like constantly, constantly having Bebe. You can see we've got a bunch of them floating there in the water. I have no idea where mom or dad are here. I think it's Yolanda and Lucas, if I remember correctly. I don't see them anywhere. Maybe they're deep in the in the water, swimming around, having a good time. Got some seating out here for some more talks. And then to the left is going to be the platypus exhibit. Do we want to go left or should we cut right? I guess let's cut left and then we'll go right after this one. This, to me, sort of feels unfinished. So any of you that download the zoo, you're more than welcome to... Uh, Add whatever you want to this thing, but I've had my fill. Definitely, uh, definitely had my fun with this zoo. I haven't been able to spot any of the adult platypus or platypi. We've got some bebe right over there. I think that's a bebe anyways. Maybe they're just really small. That might be an adult. Oh, hey, right here. Yeah, that's definitely an adult. And then that one over there. How are you... How, what? How were they just walking on water? Is there something about you that we don't know? Anyways, let's make our way down to the main floor once again. And we'll see if we can spot any of the platypi in the underwater viewing portion. Of course, now that I'm down here, instead of being up top, there's, there's hardly any platypus even swimming in the water. What about in their little burrows and things? It looks like we've got three of them chilling in that burrow. And then maybe just one. Kind of hard to tell because sometimes they're, you know, off camera. But pretty cool. Pretty solid exhibit, that one. Let's make our way back up to the top here. And then I think... I, I mean, there's nothing to really show you guys with the, the other Bora Bora vendor area. I mean, the only difference is we have a Mexilente instead of a Chief Beef. Apart from that, it's pretty much same old, same old. Oh, I completely walked past this one. It's a little newer, so understandable why I might have done that. This is the Nile Lachui. You can see we have a, a female right over there. Looks like that might be a bebe off in the distance. Where's Darren? Where's the, uh, where's the escape artist Darren chilling at? See if we walk around, maybe we can spot him from a distance. They're really a pretty shy species, all in all. I just want to spot Darren one time. Is that Darren? There he is. Look at him. He's eyeing up that fence, too. He's going to see if he can make his way over that one. I'm sure. What a little daredevil. 
All right, so that is the Nile Lechwi, properly pronounced Lechwe, but we all know Lechwi sounds way cooler. Also a little French. Now over here on the left, this is going to be the birds. You guys, it's been so long since we've looked at the cranes. I don't, I don't even remember what the species name is. It's kind of a recurring theme here, isn't it? What is it actually? Is it is it just red crown cranes? That sounds right. I don't have a habitat barrier or anything to click on over there. Yes, the red crowned crane. How could I forget? Because that was like the second or maybe third habitat that we added. We've been playing this one for a while. Definitely been putting a lot of work into this zoo overall. But there we go. We've got the red crown cranes. And just off to our right over there, it looks like they're getting ready to have some some fancy talk about these animals in here. Ooh, there's Bebe. Got Bebe over there. It's nice to see so many guests actually utilizing this little structure that we've built on the like outside of their cage here. I remember when we first constructed that thing, it was like nobody really cared about it. They would have much rather just looked at the birds from out here, which I don't really understand whatsoever. Let's go around to the left. That way we can see a little bit better scenery far left of the zoo is mainly trees so walk around this way now we have the asian small clawed otter exhibit and see we've got one of the otters swimming around under there their little whiskers are so cute dude oh no dude another animal has escaped how how are you getting out i seriously don't get it Okay, the vet's here. Thankfully, we have like the best veterinarians this side of the Mississippi, so not super concerned when they do get out, they'll likely be taken care of fairly quickly. Oh, dude, they got their duck just in the brush over there. That's not a good spot for it. Not seeing any, oh, there we go. Just about to say, I'm not seeing any other otters in here. Maybe they all died off. We've got quite a few of them. I believe three, maybe four now in total. Let's fact check myself, see if we're... Oh, never mind. We have quite a few more. Back down the stairs once again, over into this area. We used to have, like, a makeshift food court um, back behind these two buildings. And instead, we've swapped it out for some nice foliage, some trees, some flowers, the whole nine. Because this area, too close to a building, kind of had a negative impact on our guests that were just trying to take a load off. So, I think this is working much, much better for this area. And now in here, this is our one and only small exhibit species space. I actually don't remember what we had in here either. Um, these are going to be the Diamondback Terrapins. That's right. Over here, the Danube Crested Newts. And last but not least, the Boa Constrictor. And then on the back side of this building, this is where we have one of our two train stations. Dude, there's no way we're ever getting on this train. This line is so long. I even like extended it off camera when I was working on the restaurant building a little bit more. I decided it might be in our best interest to extend this this queue. And it doesn't really look like it helped all that much. I guess, you know what, it's our zoo. We can get on the train if we want to get on the train. So let's just cut in line. I wonder how long these people at the front of the line have been waiting just to get on this little train. Oh no. Oh no! Sucks for you guys. Hey, we got a we got a front row seat here, next to uh, this this girl with the pink glasses. That's cool. We're gonna go under the tunnel first. Actually, we can probably fast forward through this. Not much to see under here. And then popping up on the back side of the capybara exhibit, that big white building there. That's sort of their home. That's their hard shelter, you know. Keep fast forwarding. Now we're gonna come up to the river. This is just to the left of the platypus exhibit. See a bunch of the guests up there on like the, the higher elevated viewing area. Do a bit more fast forwarding. We've already, you know, ridden the train once before. And now just behind that fence there is uh, the wild water buffalo. We haven't looked at them yet, but we're going to. That's the whole reason we decided to take the train out here in the first place. Now this is gonna bring us all the way back in, right next to the restaurant. Look at that sick new building, dude. It looks pretty nice. And we've got a little uh, ding dong every time the train pulls into the station. There we be. Okay, it's gonna put us back to the station we boarded at, but that's cool. We can just drop down our camera right here and we'll pretend that we just got off the train and it was awesome and we only paid a dollar for that. 
unbeatable pricing. As for the restaurant, I mean, we've been working on this for uh, about two episodes now, so I think think you guys would have probably seen all there is to see with this facility, if I'm uh, if I'm being honest. So over here, we got the wild water buffalo. Got a brand spanking new little area out there for them. I guess not brand spanking new, but relatively new. And then the left side of their little river area, still very much bare. So any of you that happen to download this zoo, whatever you want to do out here, I mean, have at it. But I, to be honest, could not be bothered to add anything else into that space. They kind of like the open area as well, so it's not like it's bad for their health or anything. I'm trying to remember what we haven't looked at thus far. Have we covered all the exhibits already? That seems like it was a really fast tour. I guess, yeah, because we already checked out the Red Crown Cranes. Yeah, I believe that is all the exhibits now gone through. I suppose the only area we didn't actually walk through is the, the crossroads of the zoo. Pretty nice area, kind of swampy, but ultimately pretty solid spot. So... I think that's probably where we're going to wind things down at for today. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.